<laughs> What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to a special Saturday episode of the Late Night Show with Dr. Kojo. We have platinum recording artist Crystal Kane here uh, and her manager, um, Masaki, uh, coming all the way from Japan. We're uh, here. They come from Japan and uh, they decided that they would stop by here in LA and be on the show with us. So I'm so grateful to have them on. Uh, I'll let you all go ahead and, and uh, join in. We're streaming live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. You know, so oh, wow. we're talking about music and mental health. I see Jennifer's uh, comment right here. So uh, we're checking in from Los Angeles, California. I would love to know where you all are checking in from, but I want to go ahead and let the, the guest introduce herself. Hey guys, it's nice to meet you. My name is Crystal K. I am a singer. I'm a Japanese singer, born and raised in Japan. I am Korean and American, and I do pop and R&B. I and love I've it. I've been singing for this year will be my 23rd year in the game. Wow! Wow! Yeah, that's fantastic. Music and mental health. I love it. Someone said music is so. Yeah, music so is healing. yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. I'm a big music, you know, fan myself. Not dabbled with it, but we have an actual, legitimate recording <laughs> artist here, uh, and she has a bit of an interesting story. So I'll let her talk about her story. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, um, your early uh, success? Looks like you have some fans in here. Crystal, yes. <laughs> Hello. Can you talk a little bit about your success and um, how you got how into I music? Got into music. Okay, so I grew up in a musical family. My mother was and still is a singer okay. um my dad he was in the navy but he would be in bands and he played the bass so he was a musician and so we would awesome. you know there there would be music in the house all the time and mom would be performing and she wouldn't be able to find a babysitter so she would just take me to her gigs and throw me in the dressing room <laughs> Um, and, uh, my first gig was when I was four and wow. her friend was a production, a head of a production company and he would make, um, commercial jingles mm -hmm. and he would call her and be like, Hey, I need a child's voice. Okay. So can we borrow crystal? <laughs> so, and, that's how you guys start. Yeah. That's how I started. Wow. And, Did I know that? Yeah. So my first job was when I was four and it was for a game called PC Engine. PC it's a Engine. super old school okay. game, like one of the first uh, electronic game sets. And mm -hmm. yeah, and then from then on, I just started singing a lot of uh, jingles. And okay. one of, or actually two, one was for like all Japan Air, all Nippon Airlines, Japan Airlines? No, that's Jao. AMA. I feel like I've heard that airlines before. Yeah. Is that just the Japanese Airlines? Yeah. Okay, wow. So that commercial song and a, a drink mm -hmm. um, song got in a lot of calls. And then we decided to turn those, usually they're about 15 to 30 seconds. Okay. But we're like, okay, let's, to, let's turn it into a whole a song. song. Yeah, okay. And that became my debut single. And that's called Eternal Memories, and I was 13. So. Wow, Eternal Memories. Yeah. And was that on your first album when you released yeah. it first? Okay. And it's still my favorite, my favorite song, my favorite single. Eternal Memories is still yeah. your favorite. Okay. And that first album was uh, Platinum? First album? I'm not sure if it was Platinum. I think it was okay. my third. Third, okay. That uh, platinum. <laughs> that's, that's exciting. How many uh, uh, records is that? A million? No, no, platinum How is... Many? Uh, million. Million. Does anybody know a uh, platinum? Does anybody know that when you go platinum, how many records does that mean you sold? I know you, you sold. It means you sold like a lot. I thought it was like a million streams. Oh, but the, there was the, no the, streaming the back, back then. then yeah, because that was ninety nine. So okay, so somebody here in the in the um the chat is gonna know how many streams you need to uh <laughs> to get a platinum. Uh, is it the platinum? Yeah, so that was your, your third um, album, one platinum. Yeah. Okay. And so you started making music at an early age. At what age did you realize that music had like a a therapeutic component to it? Right. Talking about music and mental health. Mm -hmm. Um. Hey, Kevin. What's up? Uh, hey, Kevin. What's up, Kevin? I owe a lot to Kevin. You know, 
because I started so young, mm. I think all of those things, like the impact I made, mm. the impact music makes on people, mm -hmm. those kind of topics, I think, made more sense as I got older. Okay. So I was still a kid. Right. Okay. So, so you just kind of just, singing. Yeah, I was just kind of singing. It's like a hobby, and it's like, oh, it's fun. But I didn't really understand the, the impact and the depth and the responsibility yeah. I had as an artist until much later. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe mm, like after college. To college, okay. Yeah. And then I would hear a lot of. So the only place I could I get to hear feedback is when I meet my fans okay. or like at shows and when they tell me how much impact or what specific song played a big part right. in a certain moment in their, in their life. life. Yeah. Or like That's I wild. have a lot of people saying, oh, I played Koi Ni Ochitara for our wedding. And it's just like um, my neat. song is like their life's like. Uh, track pl playlist right the, yeah the, 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 that's super deep and like when i think back like for, for me music is is a way to communicate but um you know i, I talk you know, for my um followers especially the majority of them you know who have adhd as a big thing on on this channel and even for me with my adhd I, i'm always gonna have some type of music around mm -hmm. like I, I like music in the background yeah. When I'm showering, I, I play music. When I'm sitting, I play music. When I'm happy, I play music. When I'm sad, I'm playing music. So you associate like certain songs with certain memories, Moments right? And so memories, for for yeah. people who think of like, wow, your song was like the soundtrack to like my wedding. Mm -hmm. That's like a huge thing. That's huge. That's wild. It's forever. Like wow. they'll remember that moment forever, and whenever they play it, it'll take them back and. Mm -hmm you know, have them remembering certain feelings and emotions wow. they had or like, oh, I was studying abroad and I would be so homesick, but I would play your uh, music and, and it would I just felt, connect I, I was to at me. Home. Yeah, I felt at home and it's, it's, it's huge. Hmm. Wow. Okay. And as you evolved as an artist, you know, you became older and you realized what responsibility your music had for certain people. Did that change how you made your music? Yeah, in a sense? I think. I think yeah. the me being so young mm -hmm. had a big part, like my attitude towards my music. It was right. starting off was like, oh, I, I, I just like singing or right. I just want to do what I want to do. Like it, it was all more focused towards myself. You. Right. Me, 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 whatever is cool, whatever is hot. But you know, as I got older oh, yeah. and I'm, and, and I'm, I'm going through emotions as, right. a, as a woman, a girl to a teenager, to a woman, right. Very different. Going to school at the same time. Cause I was going to school. Like I was 13. So I was a middle school. I was in seventh grade. Wow. We, we, when I first came out with your first single with my first 13. Single. Wow. That's a lot. So I was juggling school and work, which is pretty, mm -hmm. um, fortunate because i feel like a lot of Millennials. young artists or like idols mm -hmm. they miss their childhood in a sense but i got to live both so oh what was i saying um yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I, think he, I think that that coming threw you off how did you guys what how did you guys connect i need to know I, I think that, that threw you off right because it threw me off for a second <laughs> this is like two sides <laughs> of my life collided and i don't know what is going on well, <laughs> I have the best publicist in the world, and he, he made this possible. That's hilarious. It was a DM from his publicist, yeah. and I actually have a mental health um, project going with my three other girlfriends called All For One. Yeah, he had to talk about yeah. that. That's important to talk about. Yeah, and um, we just wanted to raise awareness for mental health in Japan because... Japan is one of the biggest suicide, has one of the biggest suicide rates. And ever since the pandemic, mm. it has gone up. And a lot of it is our 20 year olds, uh, in the people in 20s, their 20s. Yeah. So we wanted to bring awareness and also make, create a space, like a safe space for people to talk about it. Because Japan is a country where, you know, everyone works so hard and, whatever is uncomfortable or you know doesn't is hard to bring up they will mm -hmm. just kind of 
<laughs> act as if nothing's wrong right. and then sweep it under the rug. We're doing okay. We just yeah. got to go through it. We just got to, we got to push through, but there's no, is there's not enough support. Yeah. Um, and just places where people can talk about it because mm -hmm. they feel like it's, it's shameful or it's embarrassing or it's a burden. And yeah. um Yeah his publicist DM'd me and he's like, Oh, my friend, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Kojo, mm -hmm. he, he is an amazing um, mental <laughs> health expert. And if you want him live and then, yeah, that yeah. was like last September, I think. Yeah. It, it's, it's been it maybe like summer. Yeah. Almost five, six months. Yeah. Wow. Time and flies. Came on and everyone loved it. I, right. I was nervous cause it's a, it's a tough topic to translate. Right. Yeah. To my audience, right. because my audience that are Japanese. Very difficult. But everyone really, really appreciated mm -hmm. you being on the show. I appreciate that. And that was Makanai Monday. What was yeah, Makanai Monday. Oh, Makanai, what does that mean again? Makanai means to not give up, to not lose. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I feel like I've asked that question before. <laughs> I feel like I've asked that question. Japanese is difficult. Yeah, yeah. Makanai Monday. Yeah. And and that's the, the, the beautiful thing about when you're talking about music right because i feel like it puts you in the perfect position to be an advocate because sometimes like i grew up in norway right and in, in europe so norway yeah really norway, yeah yeah you didn't know that no, I, I didn't know I, that. I, I thought i thought I turned it off. yeah i grew up in norway and i came wow. to the states when i was six so at one point uh the norwegian language was, was my first language right in wow. Norwegian. so i spoke that over english uh, -huh. uh but sometimes like even in norway we would hear songs that were um in english or we'd hear songs in languages that we didn't understand but it still hits you a certain way mm -hmm. so that's the thing about music like it can go it can take you further mm -hmm. and, and connect you with people that you would normally be with so i think being a musician and knowing that you have an audience of people not just like in japan but all over the world that's remarkable yeah know? that's that's very it, it's it's um I, it kind of indescribable, like right because music is literally universal. <laughs> yeah, it's borderless, it is. and that's yeah. a beautiful thing. Like I, I, I think it. music is maybe like mm -hmm. one of the only way you can communicate without, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. talking or having yeah. to, you know, there's yeah. no no language barrier. Right. So and somebody says something about why does music trigger certain memories, and I, I actually want to take this somewhere, but. I want to hear your opinion. Why does music trick tr certain memories? Oh, I don't know. Why Why does it trigger certain memories? I have my answer ready. I just want to see yeah. what, what your take that's on a, it is. That's a really interesting. Uh, well, I guess it's because we're so in that moment. Mm -hmm. We are immersed in that moment and whatever emotion that's heightened at that moment mm. i think it links it kind of syncs up with yeah. what you're into and what you're listening to and it just kind of is ingrained mm -hmm. yeah yeah i feel like with, with music or or any experience like for example like i tell people if you break up with somebody right and you catch yourself missing them you're thinking about all the good parts but you're not thinking about all the bad things that happen right so sometimes if you think of, you know, your first single, right? Mm -hmm. When you were 13, so it came out a couple of decades ago. You might think of how life was in the 90s or how things were. And then you don't realize that maybe you were a little sad at that point, but you think about all the good things sometimes. Mm -hmm. So when music is a very, as somebody said, I think it's the same with smells. Yeah, you can connect like a, a, a smell mm -hmm. or a song to a certain memory mm -hmm. and my, my follow-up question to what Pierce is saying is, with music, how do you disconnect, or you as an artist, do you ever have a hard time disconnecting like a certain song that you've made or a certain song that you like by somebody else from a period of time in your life that you don't want that song to represent uh, just that thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like think of my, my favorite song of all time is uh, Everlong by Foo Fighters. You know, and rock is not my favorite genre. My favorite genre is like hip hop and R and B, but uh -huh. that's my favorite song of all time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't want that song to represent maybe the that's time that point. you were struggling yeah. in college or the time that you were with that girl. But you always think of that song with that thing. Mm -hmm. So do you ever think about that from the perspective of your songs or other people's songs? 
It's kind of a deep question, but you either that is it, super deep. You, you either get it or you don't. Wow, that is deep. Or maybe I'm talking in circles. Oh man, that that's really deep. Um, I think it's I think only time. Yeah. Time helps time. and and growth, mm -hmm. like personal growth. I'm sure once you're able to heal, if it was mm -hmm. a hurt, yeah, then you'll be able to kind of listen to it and see it or listen to it from a different place mm -hmm. right yeah right. And, and it's funny because i've had patients who like when we talk about ptsd i tell people all the time be careful what you take in because you can get ptsd without experiencing that trauma like you could have heard about something and that mm -hmm. could be traumatic enough for you to where you get ptsd really yeah you actually can so sometimes I, I tell people all the time like we have these phones and people are sending all kinds of traumatic videos or so and so uh -huh. that died. I'm like, hey, I don't watch none of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to keep my I'm like, hey, if I don't need to be exposed to that trauma, I'm not going to be exposed to it. You know, mm -hmm. when it comes to like music, I've had patients say that on the day that something bad happened to them, maybe they gone through a car accident or maybe there was some type mm -hmm. of abuse, verbal, physical, emotional, but there, there was a certain song that was playing at that time or uh -huh. song that was like popular. And then anytime I think of that song, uh, yeah, it, it takes them back to that, that trauma. Yeah. So as we work through the trauma, sometimes we have to like use exposure therapy and like over time, like gradually introduce them to the stimuli that's painful. Mm -hmm. So it's like with music, sometimes you might think of a certain artist or a certain person and they're not evil, but that's what that song represents for you. <laughs> that's what you know. <laughs> yeah, that's difficult. I never yeah. really thought of I thought I never thought about that. That's tough. And, and mm -hmm. someone said there's a song. Uh, I can't listen to for my grandma's funeral. It started the second I walked up to that casket. I can never listen to it without bawling. Mm. Yeah. You know what? Oh, I actually have a song too. Oh. Uh, what song would that be for you? Um, It's uh, Season or wait. It was like Ty Dolla Sign and somebody and Music Soul Child. Mm. And it was like you were there for a reason like a season or something like that. And that was just, it, everything just aligned with okay. everything I was going through, a, a breakup. And I was just like, oh, wow. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you hear that song today, or, or if you're at the store and you hear that song, does your mind still go there initially? It goes there, but it doesn't take me to a sad place. Oh, I can I like smile that. about I like it that. now. I can be like, oh, that happened. I like that. Yeah, but yeah, like time. Time mm. healed that. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Time is a powerful thing. And somebody's saying music, uh, is, there, is therapy. Oh, yeah, I want to get on this right here. Would you call music uh, therapeutic in a sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and what would you say that music does for you? Like, is your career, like, is your livelihood, but just take music in general. Like, if you strip music away from you. Oh, my life. God. No, like... <laughs> I think about just, that maybe like three times a year. <laughs> Can you guys imagine a world like Earth with no music? Yeah, I could. That I would could. be a sad yeah. place. And I think people would be miserable <laughs> yeah. without music, like 100%. A mm -hmm. 100%. Like, yeah, I can't, I can't imagine. So for me, yeah, I, and, and to be... Like on from a creator side, like mm -hmm. I, no, I, I can't imagine okay. life without music. Now take me through, like, sadness. Right when it comes to sadness, do you ever make a song with the intention of wanting to connect with someone who's feeling sad? Because people say, "I, I might want a happy song for happy occasion or a sad song for a sad occasion." So do you ever make a song with intention of trying to connect with somebody? Like, are you ever that intentional? Because like when I make my content, I'll think of, okay, someone who's been depressed for all month, mm -hmm. what are they struggling with? How can I like uplift them? And that's how I make my videos that I post here online. So when it comes to the music, do you ever think about like making a song on purpose that's sad? And sometimes taking yourself to that sad mm -hmm. place. So you can connect with somebody on that level? I what I keep in mind when I make music is to have to be a hundred percent authentic, like something that happened to me. Okay. Like whatever the lyrics will be all true. True. 
So my intentions would be to be 100% truthful okay. and like, and also raw. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the listener's choice to, if they want to connect and go to the sad place. Okay. But it's not like, okay, I'm going to make this a sad song. It's more Got of, it. this is sad, but this is real. Got it. And if you're sad, please, con like, let's connect. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? It, it, it does make sense. It makes sense. And what's your thoughts on this right here? Sadness, our keys played minor keys. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. But it can it can still be in major keys, too. The lyrics can be sad, but the melody can be in major. Oh, 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 it can throw you for a loop. <laughs> for the, the song, because there's, and it's funny with how songs are interpreted. Like, you know, you said as you got older, music meant something to you. And, you know, it meant something different at each stage in your life. And I've actually like heard songs, like when I went back as an adult, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is this is not this is not happy, right? <laughs> like it, initially, the first one that comes to mind is um, uh, "Pumped Up Kicks." Oh my god, that yeah. was I was shook. Like when yeah. I realized the meaning of the right. lyrics. No, it it was, and I'd love to know people at home like their reaction to it. And we're, we're not gonna get to it. I think it that's intentional. No, no, it it was intent. Right? I'm sure that was intentional because like the first time I heard a song, I was in college, so it's something that people would just play. So like, better run, better run. oh shoot, faster than my gun. Right. Like, yeah. So I would just dance bullet. to it, and I never thought, oh my goodness, that's what they're talking about. So yeah. I think sometimes you can, people can throw you for a um a loop mm -hmm. with like a, a, a uplifting, uplifting melody, melody or a chord, <laughs> and but then the you... lyrics from the meaning of the song is like, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. And uh, is there a certain job? Okay, what was your thoughts on that? Is there a certain music genre that's recommended to help with depression? I don't know what you're... Hmm, I think it's a preference of that person, like whatever sound sonically makes them, like calms them down. Mm -hmm. It could be hardcore rock for some people. Yeah. It can be jazz. It could be classical music. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's a preference, no? Oh, no, no I, I, I think so too. And I think music in general can be therapeutic for someone with, with depression. Uh, and there's there's two sides to the coin. Like, do you want to, like, if you're depressed, do you want to sit there in sadness and li or listen to like sad songs? And I, like, sadness is just an emotion. Like, if you feel sad, we should feel it through, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I caution people to say sometimes you might not want to stay in that, sadness. in that sadness. You should always sit with your sadness and, you know, process it. But to stay in that moment where you're sad, because um, at some point, if, you, if you've been sad for a long time and it's tripped on the quality of your life, it's maladaptive. It could be something that's like, mm -hmm. you know, a mental health condition, maybe depression or something along the lines of. So I, I just will say that. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely say that. So I have one final question for you. So as a mu musical artist, what do you think your responsibility is when it comes to mental health? Because you're doing the all for one. And you're teaming up with other big artists who have a big name mm -hmm. and you're using your platform in Japan and also, you know, by virtue of you being here in the States, you can kind of get to both audiences. But what do you think is the role of a, a musician when it comes to mental health awareness? The role of a musician when it comes to mental health mm -hmm. awareness. Hmm. I think my role is to it's a tough question. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a tough, tough question. question. Yeah. <laughs> but easy to one. be to be able to be the the play like the playlist of mm -hmm. your of your everyday life, mm -hmm. but also to help um, create something that people can resonate with. Um, mm, that relatability, right? Yeah, relatability, and just. You know, honest, honest music and honest lyrics with like, you know, because I think it really mm, that kind of energy you can hear it, right? Like yeah. Whatever I put into whatever energy mm -hmm. or mindset I'm in, what when I'm creating mm -hmm. it, 
or intentions, right. people can hear it yeah, if, and yeah. they'll receive that. So as long as it's, I, I think it's my job to hmm, help create an atmosphere for the listener to um, connect or yeah, resonate whatever emotions they're going through mm. with, with my music. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a tough question. No, no, it's, a, it's a tough ah. question, but I think just being able to allow people to express their emotions, and especially as a guy, right? We don't talk about male mental health enough, but um, just sometimes, and even for me personally, if I'm feeling a certain emotion, sometimes the only thing that can draw that emotion out is like a song, mm-hmm. you know? And like, whether it's a happy or, or, or a sad, sad. Or, or in between, or like, or if it's an emotion that you're not sure, quite sure what it is, mm-hmm. just having that song to listen to. Like a happy place, like a safe space. A, a, a safe, exactly, a safe yeah. space. It, it, it takes you to that place where you're comfortable. Uh-huh. Uh, and then a safe space for our listeners. And also, I think what we can do that pe- listeners can't do is. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, I need Google. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's certain words that don't translate to the English yeah, language, right? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. And it, it'd be funny if there was somebody who was also Japanese on here who understands what you're saying. Speak on behalf of. Speak on behalf of. So okay. I'm oh, the person oh, yeah. that yeah. is saying or expressing a certain emotion or something you know, for the, the listeners, like yeah. something that they usually wouldn't say. Or exactly. Like, you know, it's like you're giving I'm a speaking. voice to the voices. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm giving. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I know Chance the Rapper has a line in one of his songs. Uh, I think he was talking about himself, I would assume. But he said something in there along the lines of uh, the people's champ must be everything that people can't be. Mm. You know, so it's almost like if he's an artist, right, and he's speaking for people, like you have to go out there, be bold and courageous, mm-hmm. and you have the the support of the people on your shoulders as you bring out this message. But because of like someone who is depressed or anxious or someone who's going through a hard time, they're not going to be out there sharing their story yeah. to the world in that moment. So it's like you're like the person who's Doing speaking for, it, them. for them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's tight. That's our job. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. And uh, Kayla says. If I watch it live, I uh, heal a little. I understand Aww. myself. Kayla, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Man, you're out uh, here helping up, helping people, I, I, changing lives. I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm doing uh, the best I can. And, and like, I see myself like that in a sense. Like, I'm a regular person, but for whatever reason with the, the platform, I'm just going to do my best to, you know, help people out. Um, and just by doing that, it helps me out too. Like, yeah, the benefit that I get, Same. I'm sure you get that as Same. a musician, absolutely. You know, and that that's what allows you to keep going because you can't just have it's it's beyond the followers or it's beyond like a album sales or it's beyond money or any type of magazine. Like, you need something else that makes you want to wake up in the morning and say, okay, this is cool. Like, I enjoy doing this. Like, I'm not being like forced to. No, I really had a this aha moment like. At my Christmas show I did at the end of year last year, uh-huh. and it's I remember been, you that. yeah, it's been very hard for performers. What Kevin, to come out. <laughs> for sure, at some point. And you know, not being able to do shows for a really long time, where like that's the only place we can meet and interact with our fans. Right. And also the fans are have been waiting to hear live music. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> for both while. sides, it's like, oh my God, finally. And mm-hmm. it, something it's something we kind of take for granted, like when it was normal, like we can yeah. go see shows and I, see I, I artists definitely took and it for granted. everything. But it's like when I stood on that stage after such a long time and actually saw the fans and, and people, people listening and singing for them, it's like you feel that literal right. physical connection, like mm-hmm. energy. And it's like, wow, the importance of co- human connection. Yeah, no, it, it's huge. It's so huge. It's huge. It's so yeah. huge. And it goes both ways. Like, yeah. I'm doing it, this, it but does. then I get energy from yeah. my fans yeah. and it, it's vice versa. So, yeah. and, and people don't realize like when I go live, like just even the, 
the comments that come to the right side, that's the energy, like yeah. that real time feedback. I like that because like this is the, the closest thing that I have to like uh, like a tour or you know like yeah 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 it's like that's like my version of it like yeah. like you're actually you know seeing people and, and talking to them but like I I am too but it's virtual you know but but that connection is what allows you to keep doing your thing mm -hmm. and it allows you to tap into that side of yourself where. You realize that we need each other. Yeah, like, virtual you know, is. I think it's been big. Like same with yeah. Mucking I Monday. Like, yeah, uh, and that's how we right. connect, got connected. So it's oh. huge. As a um, all right, this is can we slide this one in here real quick? I saw that one too. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I I think I told people um that even as a content creator, I've been more anxious in LA. Um, but some of it is, is good anxiety, and I just work through it every single day. I don't run away from it. But what would be your your tips on this? How do I handle my anxiety? I just try and think about what the blessings I have, like what mm. I have mm. and all the support and the support system and people I have around me. Oh, I try I like to focus that. on that because um, like it's so easy to, once you get anxious, you start going down this hole where it's like, Oh, it's just like a negative mm -hmm. ball, like a snowball, mm -hmm. right? And you just start thinking mm -hmm. all the negative stuff or like, oh, damn, I don't have this. Oh, why am I doing this? Like, But all you got to do is wake up. And if you f find yourself, if you catch yourself mm -hmm. going that negative route, be like, right. nope. Like, oh, my God, I'm alive. Mm -hmm. I'm living. Right. I'm actually healthy. Right. I have friends. I have family. I have a job. Like. It, it sounds very simple, but just kind of, I don't know, just counting your blessings. Uh, right, right. And and as you're talking, I'm, I'm Pierce, thank you for asking that question. I got to give Pierce a love this show. This is where I, I clap and I do my yelling. <laughs> I got to give my love this show because hearing you talk, so you don't realize it, but you said to handle your anxiety, you, you think of what you're grateful for, right? And when you think of what you're grateful for is bringing you to the present moment, right? Mm -hmm. Anxiety cannot exist if you're living in the present. Because anxiety is like you, oh. you're thinking about the future, right? You're thinking about something and you try to account for that. Oh, my so God. Wow. Okay. If, if you bring yourself to the, the present, like if you're mindful, you cannot, you can't be anxious and be in the moment. So as, you, yeah. as you're being grateful and saying, oh, I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for, for air. I'm grateful for all these things. You're thinking about what you have at this present moment and you can't be living in the future and you can't be anxious so uh so yeah just now right you gotta stay so, in your now. so you're, you're doing something that's actually very beneficial like your mindfulness that's what people use like substances right and i'm not gonna say this substance is bad or that substance is bad but when people you know use a psychoactive substance it brings you to the present moment you can't be anxious Mm -hmm. I mean, but some substances mm -hmm. can make you anxious. But w once you're mindful, you're not thinking about the future. Like you you're can't just think about the right. future, right? You know. So, so that's that's. I'm happy we got to that point. So, um, I'm not gonna take up too much of Crystal's time. But where can we find you online? You can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Amazon, YouTube. Um, yeah, I think awesome. That's about it. And uh, on Instagram as well. On Instagram too. Yeah. Uh, and we'll drop your IG in here is at Crystal, uh, Crystal K. K official, maybe? Official, yeah. Crystal K Crystal official. K official. Yep. Crystal K official. Is this going to stay on? Oh, yeah, this is going to stay on. Ooh, Crystal K official. I need to tell all, all my fans. Too. Right. And, and before we get off, we do a water break. Let me go get you some water because. Okay. She, she's right. We, we got to do a water, water break. break. What's a water, water break? break? Uh, 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 Facebook to Kojo Sensei no Facebook to Twitter to Arede Nama Hai Shin Chu des. I'm letting my, my Japanese fans know. Sure I guess we're doing a water break. Water. Uh, uh, if, if you're recording, that's all good. <laughs> Let's get the water break in. Uh -oh. There you go. Water. Water what are break. you going to do? Are you going to spray it? Uh, no, no uh, people have to drop the magic word before we can take a sip of water. Okay. So I'm waiting for the magic word. And then once we get the magic word, we can go ahead and uh, take some water. Uh, Alicia, I explained the water break to her, you know, but somebody has to drop in the magic word so we can go ahead and 
Drink the what water. What is this? Or else we're going to... Uh, there we go. Cheers. All right. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, I thought you were going to, like, chug it. <laughs> oh, no, I, I'll, I'll chug it out. We just have to drink water. Just okay. stay hydrated. Yeah, stay hydrated. So, I yeah. I'm so bad with hydration. I struggle there too, especially on the go, because if I drink too much water, I'll be peeing everywhere. <laughs> kanpai. That's cheers in Japanese. Uh, cheers in Japanese. Hey, say kanpai. 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 I'll kanpai. take one more. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, you all. Thank um, you. Uh, Chris, uh, definitely come to um, the future lives. Uh, I like having you around. I'll definitely get to um, everybody's questions, but thank you so much for coming. I appreciate everybody for being cordial in the chat. Uh, this is the first time that we've done a show on the weekend. Uh, this is the first Thank guest you. that we've had. Oh, in, first guest? In, in person, actually. Yeah. yeah so I, I really time. appreciate that. From Japan to LA. Right. You know, you, you have a busy schedule and you decide to come by. No, I really appreciate so that. Thank you so much for you. Me. I love this um, community. I appreciate you as well. So, mm -hmm. everybody, have a fantastic Saturday night. Take care. Peace. Take care. Happy weekend. Happy weekend, y'all.